for inviting us here and for honoring our mother in this way. Um, there, are, there are those who question the value of an award when the recipient, my mother, Daphne, has already been killed for her work. When the people who ordered her assassination remain at large and when the conditions that enabled her murder remain as dangerous as ever. My mother's death and the manner in which she was killed are an unmitigated disaster for press freedom in Europe. And they're a symptom of deep institutional failure in Malta and institutional powerlessness in Europe. Seven months since her assassination, none of this has changed. Just today, an, another man was, was wounded and possibly killed in, in another bombing in Malta. The situation in Malta, it's not only in Malta that the situation has grown more frightening. The danger has also spread to other parts of Europe. Soon after my mother was killed, the investigative journalist Jan Kuczak was killed with his fiancée in Slovakia. Then an Italian journalist, Paolo Borometti, barely escaped a contract killing last month in Sicily. And two weeks ago, a journalist in Montenegro, Olivera Larkic, was shot in the leg. Knowing this, people ask how an award can help my family with justice, help my compatriots fight corruption, hold the state to account for allowing its most powerful critic to be executed in broad daylight, and help Europe understand that it is failing its values most strident defenders. As a citizen, I share these sentiments, and I ask the same questions. An award would have been more useful when my mother was still alive. But as my mother's son, I feel differently as does the rest of my family. We feel differently because we're forced to learn early on that the killing of my mother was only one step towards making her disappear. The next steps were to kill her legacy, to turn the public against her, to intimidate and harass anyone who dared memorialize her, fight for justice for her assassination, or campaign for investigations into the crimes that she uncovered. How is a journalist's legacy destroyed? First, by celebrating her death. My mother's readers, her colleagues in the Maltese and international press, her friends and my family and I have been compelled to accept that in, a, in our small island home, there are politicians, public officials, police officers, and people who have never read anything that my mother wrote, who are happy that she was killed, and particularly happy that her death was so horrific. Some of the people who are responsible for my mother's protection and who are now responsible for securing justice for her death are pleased that she can no longer report on the ethical breaches, condemn the corrupt practices, or mock their incompetence. We know this because they are not embarrassed to say so. Second, by distorting her work when she is no longer alive to defend it. People in government who exercise vast powers over state media, law enforcement, and the minds of many of my compatriots have continued to call my mother a purveyor of fake news, a hate blogger, a traitor and a witch, effectively blaming her for her own assassination, for writing too freely, for expressing herself too critically, and for hurting the feelings of dangerous people who she should have known better than to offend. A third way a journalist's legacy is destroyed is by encouraging people to forget her, hoping that they will also forget her work, as well as the fact that whoever paid for her assassination continues to enjoy complete impunity. My country's home affairs minister downplayed my mother's targeted killing as unlucky. The finance minister described the global outrage that followed her death as exaggerated. And the prime minister signaled two months after her funeral that it was time to move on. A makeshift memorial to my mother in Valletta, which happens to be this year's European capital of culture, has been removed nine times and replaced ten times. Banners put up to keep her memory alive are constantly being torn down and replaced. Vigils held to, to mark the 16th of every month, the day my mother was killed, never make it to state television, and the organizers are jeered out in the street and mocked by public officials. My mother is now beyond all and any harm and no longer needs anyone's protection. But her memory continues to be targeted by powerful people who won't rest until her legacy has been completely destroyed. 
We can't let that happen. Her legacy, as you recognize today, was a gift to and belongs to society. It's a legacy that inspired many, many thousands of people in Malta, Europe, and around the world to find their own voices, to demand more of themselves and the people who make the rules, and to understand that we cannot improve the world only through good deeds, but that we must also find the courage to fight the immoral and immoral within our societies. By extending this award to my mother's legacy, you protect it. And in accepting this award on behalf of my mother, I also accept it on behalf of the handful of brave journalists in Malta who continue her work, on behalf of the civil society activists who keep her memory alive, often at great personal risk, on behalf of the people who keep turning up at vigils and protests dedicated to my mother, even when everything seems so hopeless, on behalf of the journalists across the world who have retold her story many hundreds of times, and yes, even on behalf of politicians in Europe and at home who have taken up my mother's cause. I won't name these people here. They're big enough targets as it is, but they have all helped protect my mother's memory and in doing so have become part of her legacy. And they have brought us closer to justice, not criminal justice for her death perhaps, but another sort of justice, one that recognizes her life's work as a contribution to all of us and her assassination as a crime against us all. Thank you. Thank you so very much for your bravery and for continuing the work. And